Hi, I'm David Nazar in for Rick Reef. Welcome to Inside OC. We're going to spend the next half hour dissecting the Kelly Thomas police beating case from all angles. We'll hear from Kelly's father, a Fullerton City Councilman, a Fullerton website disclosing new details daily. We'll also hear from the District Attorney, the Orange County Rescue Mission specializing in caring for the homeless and a psychiatrist specializing in schizophrenia. But first, an outpouring of criticism and demands for accountability are tearing through the county in a story that's gone global. Nick Gerda has the background. Hundreds gather to protest the death of 37-year-old Kelly Thomas, the homeless schizophrenic man who was brutally beaten by police officers on July 5th. Thomas died five days later. This demonstration in front of the Fullerton Police Department, one of many protests over recent weeks, again draws a crowd of hundreds, again denouncing the actions of the police officers involved and the lack of response from the department and city officials. Back on the 5th, officers were dispatched to the city's transportation center to investigate reports of a man attempting to break into cars. Thomas was ID'd as a suspect. And then, the altercation between Thomas and six Fullerton cops. I saw two cops on top of a homeless guy right here that I know, and um, they were pretty much beating him up, telling him to stop resisting, and then more police came, and they started beating him with a flashlight, back of a flashlight in the back of his head. And he wasn't moving around at all, but more came and they started tasering him and it was just a, a horrible sight. The guy wasn't moving, had his arm in front of him and his head was down already and he wasn't moving at all and, and uh, they just kept going. The attorney representing the six officers claims Thomas was combative and the officers did not use a taser excessively. The beating was captured by this nearby surveillance camera. It's uncertain right now just how clear the images are. The Orange County District Attorney's Office and the FBI are investigating. The DA's office now has the video, but will not release it. However, there are two other videos circulating. A bystander at the nearby bus depot caught the incident on his cell phone, and that video has been all over the internet. The other video is of eyewitnesses reacting to the beating as they board this bus. Face, the, uh, curve was red, and it beat him up. They can't. And two of them were him six times. Justice for Kelly! This protest reflects the overwhelming concern among Fullerton residents that the city and the department still won't give answers. Answers a community is desperate for. In Fullerton, Nick Gerda reporting. One of the many issues of concern in the department's initial decision to keep five of the six officers on street duty after the incident. The Fullerton cops weren't reassigned until three weeks after the altercation. All are now on paid administrative leave, and many are calling for Fullerton Police Chief Michael Sellers to resign. A quick note, when this story first broke, I began contacting the Fullerton Police Department and subsequently called every day, sometimes two or three times a day. We offered Chief Sellers a spot on the show with all the time he wanted to tell the department side of the story, information that may be out there that we're not hearing about, information that could show there are, of course, two sides to this story. The department, I'm told, was considering the interview and finally decided against it. The invitation, of course, is still open for Chief Sellers. Now here to talk about this case, Ron Thomas, father of Kelly Thomas. Bruce Whitaker, Fullerton City Councilman, and Chris Thompson, a Fullerton School District member, also representing the website FullertonsFuture.org. Thank you all for being here. Yes. Your first reaction to that story, I've heard you say it's murder by cop. Are there things we don't know, or you still believe that, Ron? I absolutely believe it's murder by cop. I'm very objective. I'm very open-minded. When I listen to the witness statements, uh, I have them. I've read them over and over. When I listen to the, the tapes, that horrifying audio, seeing my son in the hospital, looking at the MRIs, the x-rays, this is absolute murder. There's, there's no doubt about it. The injuries are to his head. You don't apprehend somebody by the head. Uh, there was no attempt there. They, they wanted to kill him. In fairness to the cops, in fairness to the department, what could be a motive there? What could have caused them to do this, looking at this as objectively as you can as a caring dad? Well, looking at it ob objectively, uh, I certainly don't believe this is normal behavior by a police officer. 
I've always said, and I still contend, this is a, a group of rogue cops. I do honestly believe they were trying to send a message to the rest of the homeless people, get out of Fullerton or you're next. I think that was a motive in it. Bruce, maybe that's the point we direct this to you. As a city official, council person in Fullerton, what can be done so this doesn't happen again? Let's advance this story. Can you implement policy change? Why not have Fullerton be a prototype or a model, if you will, so this doesn't happen across the country ever again? Well, we can't change what happened in this tragic event, but we can learn from it. And I believe there are times in certain situations where moral outrage is an appropriate response. I believe that our city has reacted, unfortunately, in, in a weak way to what's occurring. And uh, I think the beginning is to uh, admit that there could be a problem and set about solving that problem, identifying what it is. But certainly all my efforts are going to go into prevention of, of anything like this in the future. Even though we're in sort of the formulative hour, if you will, the infantile stage, what can you tell your fellow city council folk as far as procedure or policy? Well, right now my city is being presented to the world as five cardboard cutouts and a faceless, heartless bureaucracy. That's not the city that I know. And that certainly isn't the intention of the people who elected me to office. So while we may receive legal advice that we have to be somehow removed from our humanity in dealing with this, I reject that. And I think there's a better way of approaching it and certainly uh, uh, grieving appropriately along with someone who's, who's a victim is part of that process. You are one of the top officials in the city. What do you tell Chief Michael Sellers who has not come forward, who was not in front of the story when it happened? Well, I only regret that I didn't move very quickly myself. I, I felt that perhaps it was the, the chief of police or the mayor's proper role to get in front of this. That didn't happen. I, I attended the memorial for Kelly Thomas. I heard the pain from, uh, from Ron Thomas expressed up there, and I realized I'm in a position to maybe make a difference for other families, other events in the future. Uh, that's what I intend to do. I, it's hard for me to understand how my councilmates can, uh, can choose inaction. Yet people are still angry with you, as you know. Why did it take so long for you? Well, the initial reports that we got were not as, uh, at least contextually, maybe as accurate or as thorough or as, as uh, relevant to what the information that I would need, that I would uh, seek in this case. Uh, he was in a coma initially, and, and then uh, when, when uh, we got word of his death, I saw that the memorial was planned, and uh, there was no way I was going to miss that memorial. My wife and I attended, and I've tried to be as constructive on both sides uh, since that moment. I put out a letter early requesting the release, an uh, open letter to the f residents of Fullerton, request requesting release of all audio and videotapes. It's something that I think the public has a right to see. Hasn't happened yet. Chris Thompson, you've been taking the lead with Fullerton's future, helping break stories daily. Where are we at? What is the latest in this case? Well, I think the latest is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm, I'm waiting for some elected official or paid official in Fullerton to actually be transparent about this. I think Bruce and Sharon Quirk are being managed by insiders in the, in the city of Fullerton and the Fullerton PD. And I think there's a lot of questions about what's really happened with this investigation. Um, we're hearing that it may be the case that the officers um, were allowed to view the uh, video that we have not been able to see um, prior to and in conjunction with their reports. What's the actual validity of their reports? Um, I think that um, we're not getting the true story as to when the DA was brought into this thing. And, and I think um, I, I'm, I'm amazed at the lack of transparency that we're hearing out of the DA's office with um, you know when they were brought in and what their intent is. and. Uh, so the latest is what appears to be more, um, more hiding of the truth. Given that's the case, what are you efforting? Do you want to see a recall of city council members? Do you want Chief Sellers to resign? Where are you at right now? I would say both of those things are absolutely necessary. We have begun and noticed three of the city councilmen, um, Don Bankhead, Mayor Jones, and immediately past police chief Pat McKinley. Um, we're going to recall them because they, either through an absence of comment at all or direct comments in, in chief, on Chief McKinley's part, um, advocating that the police department itself control the release of that video, um, 
we need for the elected people who manage the police department that have allowed this to occur to pay the price of losing their jobs so that not only the city of Fullerton can begin to recover, but so that all over the country, um, elected bodies that manage police departments know that the price of not being transparent with the people is losing your job. You are not family to Ron or Kelly. You are not a friend. Why are you so angry over this? I, uh, well, um, Tony Bouchala, who owns Fullerton's Future, called me up and briefed me on the story, and we went down to the site, met Ron, and interviewed Ron at that time. That interview appeared on the blog, and um, Ron pulled out his iPhone and was um, kind enough to show us, share with us, the picture of his son, Kelly, in the hospital and Tony and I looked at each other, and that was it. You, you couldn't, you just could not fabricate a justification that included reasonable force that led to that photo unless Kelly were armed or the greatest karate expert in the history of mankind. Speaking of that, Ron, you saw our story at the beginning of the show. I'm sorry we had to show that to you. You hear your son calling out for you, crying out for you on an emotional level. What did you think when you saw the story now, weeks later? <clears throat> Every time I see that, uh, it, it just tears me apart. Um, I, hear, I hear him cry for me every day, every night. And uh, it, it really tears me apart. To hear city officials, district attorneys, even the coroner's office have a doubt uh, suggest that maybe the officers won't be charged, if so, to a very lesser degree. Uh, these types of things is sickening, absolutely sickening. Um, they need to know that I'm not going away. This fight will be here, absolutely be here, and I'll back it with all the facts that I have uh, to continue this. It's almost unimaginable to figure out what you're dealing with for folks who obviously have never gone through this what kind of pain are you in it's moment to moment my emotions run the gamut uh, every day every moment uh, I try to stay extremely focused that's what I have to do for Kelly uh, I've had to put my grieving and mourning for him aside that that'll come but for now I'm just absolutely focused on getting justice for him